Hello and welcome to this video on the series RL filters. A low pass filter allows low frequency signals through and attenuates or reduces the voltage of higher frequencies. The half power point is where the output is around 71% or 1 over root 2 of its maximum value. Below the half power point, the output voltage is not sufficient. The cutoff frequency FC occurs at the half power point, and for an RL filter, the cutoff frequency equals R over 2 pi L, whether a low pass or a high pass filter. The bandwidth is from 0 Hz to the cutoff or corner frequency with a low pass filter. A high pass filter allows frequencies above the cutoff frequency through, and the same components give the same cutoff in a low pass and a high pass filter. The pass band starts at the cutoff frequency. Our RL filter has a 1 kilo ohm resistor and a 0.33 Henry inductor. The supply voltage VS is a sine wave with an amplitude or peak voltage of 100 volts. This filter has a cutoff frequency of around 482 Hz. A series RL circuit can be used as a passive low pass or a passive high pass filter. Passive filters do not boost or amplify the output signal. There are only three places in this circuit to take the output voltage from. The top left is the supply voltage which is the input, so should not also be the output. The top right is grounded, so can't be the output. So the only place we can use for the output voltage, V out, is between the resistor and inductor. The output is VL, the voltage across the inductor, with reference to ground. Let's see how V out changes with the frequency to see what type of filter it is. As we increase the frequency, the inductive reactance XL increases. From Ohm's law, as XL increases, the inductor voltage VL increases, which is our output. If the frequency is low and the inductive reactance is just 10 ohms, then V out will be relatively very small, so low frequency gives us a small output voltage. If the frequency is very high and the inductive reactance is 100,000 ohms, V out will be relatively very large, so high frequency gives us a large output voltage. With VL as the output voltage, this is a high pass filter. We use our SIGGEN to set the supply voltage and frequency. VS is kept at a constant amplitude for a fair test of the circuit. The inductive reactance in ohms is the product of 2 pi, the frequency in hertz, and the inductor value in Henry. Using the impedance triangle, the circuit impedance is equal to the square root of R squared plus XL squared and is in ohms. The series current in amps is the quotient of the supply voltage and impedance. The inductor voltage is current multiplied by the inductive reactance. Using the voltage triangle and Pythagoras, we can find Vs, Vr, or Vl if we know the other two voltages. Instead of working every formula out individually to eventually find Vl, I prefer to make one formula by combining the others together. I'll explain why shortly. So the output voltage is current times inductive reactance. Substitute supply voltage divided by impedance for the current I. Substitute the impedance formula for Z. Tidy up the numerator a bit. Substitute 2 pi FL for XL and then we're done. Let's calculate the output as we sweep the frequency. Now I've chosen just four frequencies for the calculations, but you should choose several well-spaced frequencies either side of the cutoff, including zero hertz, so that you can plot a really decent graph like below. And my advice is to use Excel to work everything out for you, and I'll show you how shortly. At 50 hertz, VL is equal to 100 volts supply voltage times 2 pi times 50 hertz times 0.33 Henry for the inductor, divided by the square root of 1000 ohms squared plus 2 pi FL squared, where the frequency is 50 hertz. So at 50 hertz, V out is 10.31 volts. 
at 250 Hertz. VL, our output, is 100 volts times 2 pi FL, where F is the frequency of 250 Hertz. And it's the same denominator, but you just replace F with 250. At 250 Hertz, V out is 46.02 volts, so it's going up with frequency. The only variable that changes its frequency, which makes our calculations really easy, we just change the amount of Hertz each time. And finally, at 1 kilohertz, the output is 90.07 volts. So the output is rising as frequency rises. Why combine the formulas? One good reason to combine the formulas to find VL is that with modern calculators, we can click the arrow buttons to change just the frequency value each time without having to work out XL, Z, I, and eventually the inductor voltage. Just click the arrows until you're at the frequency value, add a digit or press delete to remove a digit, then just press the equals button again for the updated VL value. Don't forget that F appears twice in this formula though. I use Excel or Sheets to calculate the cutoff frequency, XL, Z, the current, VL and VR, and to plot the output graph against frequency. Changing the value of R, L or VS immediately updates everything else, including the graph. And see my video, Easy Excel for AC Theory, for how to do this. And I'll show you the equation shortly so you can try it yourself. These are the Excel or Google Sheets formulas. Don't forget the equal sign and copy mine exactly. So with VL as the output, we have a high pass filter, but out of interest, let's look at the resistor voltage too, because we can work out VR from the voltage triangle using Pythagoras. The resistor voltage actually behaves like a low pass filter in an RL circuit, and this is the same circuit. So the resistor voltage drop is a low pass filter and the inductor voltage drop is a high pass. But we can't use VR as an output as we would need two wires to show its voltage drop, which wouldn't work. Luckily, there's a very easy way to change this circuit into a low pass filter using the resistor's voltage drop. We just swap the resistor and inductor around. Now it's a low pass filter with the resistor voltage relative to ground as the output. Let's make a high pass filter on multisim.com. Make a new file and save it. Make it public or private. And the config pane lets us change all sorts of attributes for components and simulation and the sheet. I usually make the sheet larger and turn off net labels and sometimes the grid and sometimes component labels to make it look neater. So grab yourself a ground and place it. Get a resistor, place it. And if you double click a component, you can change its symbol and you can also change the values with the slider or the config pane by clicking on the cog. So if you click one microhenries, you can just change it with the slider or in the config pane. Get an AC voltage or a SIGGEN sine wave generator. The zoom buttons are at the top right. Complete your circuit. Choose your voltage. I'm going to turn off component labels because I don't really like them. Place a voltage probe actually on the output net or wire. Double click the name, call it V out or something. And I like to have inductor voltages in blue. Change the thickness so it stands out. For this probe, turn off instantaneous and turn on periodic because AC voltages change too fast to see their instantaneous value. So a periodic probe 
gives us RMS and peak-to-peak -peak values. Choose Interactive Simulation, click Play or Run Simulation. And the periodic probes, because they give us peak-to-peak, -peak, we need to divide this number 180 by 2 to get the peak value. So this output is actually 90 volts at the moment. So the whole point of this is to see how the output changes with frequency. So simulate and change the frequency, record V out and plot a graph. You can use paper or Excel. At the cutoff frequency, V out would be approximately 71 volts as we have a 100 volt supply amplitude. But at one kilohertz, V out is higher here at 90 volts. So the cutoff frequency must be below one kilohertz that we're at now, as this is a high pass filter and it's gone above the uh, 3 dB or half power point. Choose the AC sweep simulation type and this sweeps the frequency through a range of frequencies. Set the x-axis by changing the stop frequency to a reasonable value based on your cutoff. I choose uh, an x-axis scale decade, which is base 10 logarithmic, which shows a vast amount of change on the x-axis on a small graph. I put a thousand points per decade to get more granularity on the um, graph so it looks better. I choose a linear y-axis because that's my preference but you can choose log or db click simulate and the bode plot gives us phase and output magnitude against frequency where the maximum output value is one i.e a hundred percent i turn off the phase so i can see the output magnitude voltage more clearly the base 10 log or decade scale is great for seeing a vast range of data on a graph that isn't 10 miles wide. It's like watching a whole movie in one minute without missing anything important. And every main x-axis division is 10 times bigger than the last one. We can find the cutoff frequency by finding the 1 over root 2 or 0 0.71 point on the y-axis regardless of the actual value of the supply voltage. If you went to an expensive school, then change the y-axis to logarithmic. And a log y-axis makes any exponential changes look linear. For a low pass filter, just swap the resistor and inductor around and do the interactive or do an AC sweep again. But the wire must touch the probe. For graph traces, I use brown for resistor, blue for inductor and red for capacitor. Simulate again and happy days. There's our low pass response with the resistor output. It's got the same cutoff frequency as a high pass. So thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, ask questions, and I'll see you next time. Take care.